this is the way that I take the yarn off of the spool after I've spun it. So this is the single ply, just, just one piece of yarn has it been plied, and I just take it off the spool this way. I've put a knitting needle through the middle of the bobbin, and I've put a wine cork on one end to keep the bobbin from going off that end. And I found this is a really effective way, very cheap way, to be able to roll the bobbin freely. You don't want to do it too, um, too tight because I want to be able to get this yarn off the back of this chair. I think I have enough for at least, I'm going to ply it, I'm going to ply it, and I think I have enough for at least one nice scarf or shawl. Okay, cut that off of the leader yarn that's attached. And then you're going to take a little piece of trash yarn and tie one side of this loop snugly. On the opposite point on the rotation. This will secure both of the raw ends, which is nice, then they won't go flying around. And it was so handy for doing yarn. That works well too. See, there's all those crinkles. And I'll put this into that steaming bath tonight and get it. Uh, you don't want it to be wet, wet, but steam is good. And of course, what it does is when you get this wool damp, it really um, changes it as wool does, and it takes those crinkles out. All right, so there's another, I think they call that a hank. YouTube friends. I'm back in my studio right now and I'm doing something that I've been wanting to do for years, which is assemble a new spinning wheel. Yes, I have a new spinning wheel. I'm so excited. Um, this will really improve my spinning and uh, I want to thank a friend who helped me purchase this spinning wheel. That was a, a huge assistance and now I can get into this project. I bought a Kromsky Fantasia spinning wheel. It's a modern uh, style wheel. It has a lot of modern features, which I'm excited about. I do love the traditional look, but traditional spinning wheels with all the spindles and looks like kind of Rumpelstiltskin, um, they cost you know a couple of hundred dollars more. You pay a lot for the extra woodwork, which is understandable. But, um, but I wanted to be able to get a wheel that would be sturdy, good for a beginner, um, had very good reviews from a reputable company, and wasn't quite so expensive. And, and this, I think this is a very beautiful wheel. Um, it's a very simple style uh, uh, design, um, but it has some really nice features that I think uh, will be fun to explore with you. So I'm putting it together. Here's the wheel that came, and I'm in the middle of staining. That's why I'm wearing this glove. So there's the wheel, and I love this beautiful, uh, this, this is a MDF, uh, wood product here that's really really strong it has resin and stuff in it. Um, it's heavy This is a heavy piece, but this is a beautiful piece of wood that splashes across the front So even though I'm not usually someone who likes modern designs I do think this is elegant and beautiful. So here's the wheel. I've already stained it put one coat of stain on it um, I wanted to show you I have a photo of this too. This is a nitty knotty that, and I'll be showing you how a nitty knotty works later. But um, it has an end. This this is the color of the wood. This is actually an Ashford nitty knotty. They sent me this for free with the wheel. But um, it has a piece like this on each end, and I wanted to, you to see uh, the color of the wood when it first came. I ordered an unfinished wheel because again that saved me about a hundred and. $30 or something to have it unfinished so that it would have come unassembled anyway. They don't send an assembled wheel in the mail. 
Um, so I would have had to assemble it regardless. All this means is that I put um, some stain on it. I, after much reading and angst and I hate making decisions, oh, take me to a restaurant and you will regret the menu experience. But um, I opted for a Minwax. This is an oil-based stain. It's not polyurethane. Um, in our climate, which is very humid, you don't want to put anything on wood or a wood product that's going to be sticky uh, in the humidity. And so I opted for something uh, without the polyurethane. I didn't want really a wax or a varnish or anything like that on the outside. So uh, so anyway, I, this, this is a small piece, but oh my goodness, there's so many pieces. I have three, three bobbins. I'm so excited. These have all been stained twice and they're still drying. There's so many little pieces of spinning wheel sitting around my studio right now in various states of drying with their stain. And after I get it all um, stained, I am gonna use the same, I guess it's a white, it's more of a paste that Adam um, gave me and I put it, I finally put it on my loom. I never, I didn't realize when he got my loom for me years ago that I was getting a piece of unfinished wood and it was Christmas morning. And so he assembled it for me on the floor and I've used it for years and I never realized I was supposed to do something to that wood. So I did go back with a light uh, coat of um, some it's not a turtle wax. It's something you put on a car, and I'll have to uh, get it and show it to you later. But it's just a very, very, very light uh, protection on the outside. So that's the story of the new spinning wheel, and you'll be seeing a lot more of this wheel in future. I'll get my um, borrowed wheel back to my friend. It'll go back home because I have a small studio, and I don't have room for everything. And I'll say this about my old antique wheel, which uh, my Silas Barnum spinning wheel is over 200 years old, I think. And it's really in, it was a good wheel in terrible disrepair. And I am considering now that I have my own wheel that'll soon be ready to go, I'm considering disassembling the wheel on that Silas Barnum wheel, the big wheel. And, um, and seeing with a lot of YouTube help, if I can repair that wheel myself, at least enough to make it spin straight, because I'm convinced that that wheel will spin and will spin well if I can just get the main wheel uh, straightened up so it doesn't wobble so much. Okay, so I'm really excited and I'll be sharing my new wheel with you really soon. Thanks for stopping by.
time with MK and um, I'm at my new spinning wheel and I've been working on this roving. This is such pretty stuff. This is the brown and the golden rod, the brown, the cinnamon and the golden rod and the creamy white together. And I just think it's so gorgeous. And I thought I would share with you also some of the previous yarn I have spun. Um, here's the same company. This is Shep's Wool. This is almost exclusively merino wool. So it's softer and you can make a scarf out of this and most people wouldn't find it itchy or scratchy. Um, it's a lovely wool, merino's great. So I've got two balls of that now that I've spun and um, both of these are also plied. So each one of these was twice as much. So they've been plied together, it's a two ply. Um, let me see if I can, and you can see there the twist, the two different um, so here's the blue and the pink together. You can see the ply. But everything else I have in this really cool bag is yarn that I spun two or three years ago. And it's natural. It's not, I um, processed this myself from the alpaca fleece that I had. It was brown and white. Some of it I got a little bit of natural dye. This is um, turmeric, I think, gives you that little bit of yellow. This one has a faint pink. Let me see, is there another pink? This one's very faintly pink. That's uh, avocado seeds will give you that. I also had some nice dark brown alpaca that I spun together with some of the white alpaca that gave me this brown and white stripe. And here, of course, you can really see the ply because one of the ply is white and one is brown. And so you can see that um, stripiness when you ply two together. The interesting thing about comparing the merino wool, sheep's wool, and the alpaca is that this is so much softer. And I don't think of this as very high quality yarn because I didn't have a very good wheel at the time. Um, and so it's pretty inconsistent. Some of it's big and bumpy and some of it's kind of thin. Um, it's also true with this. But um, I'm going to get better and better at, at the consistency of my yarn. But it's interesting the difference in texture, even, even with that old yarn. So, I thought I would introduce you to my new spinning wheel that came in the mail last weekend, and I had fun um, assembling it myself, staining it myself, uh, but I want to show you now uh, some aspects of this modern wheel that are really cool. Here's my new wheel. This is a Kromsky Fantasia. Kromsky is the company name. They're from Poland, although they have distributors in the United States. And uh, we'll start down at the bottom and work our way up. This is a double treadle spinning wheel. So both feet go. It doesn't make it spin any faster. You can do a nice gentle, um, gentle treadle on it, gentle rhythm. I just really like now the idea of having my body centered in front of the spinning wheel instead of having the wheel on one side and all of the mother of all and the bobbin and everything assembly over here with one pedal that works your right leg but doesn't work your left leg. This just feels more balanced and even. I just, I never liked, this is called a castle wheel. Um, maybe you can kind of see it has, it just, uh, that's just the name they gave it. It's called a castle wheel. Uh, the other type is called a Saxony wheel, the type that I used to have that's kind of uh, a Sleeping Beauty spinning wheel from Fairy Tales. Um, but this is a modern wheel, and you can tell that because of this design in the middle. It doesn't have all the little spindles coming out. And the wheel, the primary wheel here, the main wheel, is not made out of solid wood. It is MDF. It's a wood product that has lots of resin. It's very, very hard. It's very heavy. It works really well. You just have to be careful not to get it wet. Um, this kind of decorative brace in the middle, this swoosh, like a Nike swoosh, uh, that's maple, so that's really pretty, and I do think it's a beautiful wheel. And because it's a modern wheel, it has um, some interesting features that I really like. Um, of course, it has a single drive band, not a double drive band like my other wheel. The drive band is not a little piece of yarn of my own concoction. It is um, this nice plastic tough stuff. But the really nice thing about this wheel is up here, um, first of all, the whole, uh, the flyer, the mother of, this is called the mother-in-law, mother-in-law, mother, -in -law, mother, -in -law, <laughs> mother -in 
the mother of all, this whole assembly, the flyer assembly. To get it off, all I have to do is pull. It is attached by an earth magnet right here in the orifice hole and right here. And in order to put it back on, I slip it on and it just, it attaches like a magnet. So I can pull it off, take my bobbin off real easily. Okay, it's really great. Um, here's my tension back here. This is called Scotch tension with this little spring. The other thing that's really neat about this flyer is the hooks on the side. And these actually aren't even hooks. These slide up and down. On old flyers, just for through the history of um, spinning wheels, you had a series of hooks, maybe a half dozen hooks on this side and a half dozen on this side. And you had to kind of thread your yarn that you were feeding onto your bobbin around those hooks. And you would have to, when you would load the back end of your bobbin and it was as full as you wanted it, you'd have to stop and you'd have to unhook that yarn and move it to the next hook down. Now, I still have to stop, and I have to adjust this, but there's no chance of my yarn getting caught on those hooks, which is a big issue, uh, I think, for... There we go. It just pops right on there. So nice. So I really like these sliding hooks. They're t absolutely adjustable. You can put them anywhere you want along here. And the first one keeps the yarn nice and out to the side so it won't travel across your bobbin shoulder here. This machine has what's called scotch tension. So let me take that back off again. And the tension on it is attached to the, the back of the bobbin right here. So there's a little string right here attached to uh, a spring. And I tighten it with this little knob here. So I can tighten the tension and I can loosen. So this is the orifice. This is where your, um, your fleece is going to go in, your fiber that you have gotten to a nice thin amount and you've had it spinning because of your treadling and it feeds in there and goes on. If I did have two drive bands, one of them would be back here around, this is called the whirl, and one of them would be around the whirl, and the other one would be around the bobbin. And the way it works is that the two would spin in opposite directions, and so it would, it would make the ratio between uh, the spinning of the wheel and the spinning of that bobbin really high. And that can be difficult to control if you have a double drive band. I think that's also one of my uh, difficulties with my previous wheel. So um, the single dry band is easier for a beginner like me. The double treadle I think is really nice. This, this wheel is just about perfect for me. And because it doesn't have all the additional um, woodworking necessary to a, a traditional wheel, and because it has that MDF big wheel, um, this, this wheel costs a whole lot less. This was um, $499 with free shipping, and I got uh, 8 ounces, I think. 10 ounces of free fleece with it. So, um, but I did have to finish it myself. This was the unfinished one. But that's, you know, it's really nice to have to finish your wheel because then you get to know it a little bit before you put it together. In addition, uh, down at the bottom, it also has a built-in Lazy Kate. And a Lazy Kate are these two, these are two bobbins down here. See, they come off like that. And they're held down there. But, um... If they were full of yarn that I had spun and I wanted to ply them together and I wanted to ply those two together and bring them together and feed them into the orifice here and have plied yarn loaded onto my bobbin then this is just a perfect solution so you can move your um, your bobbins from up here where you have your single ply, you put them down there and down there, you ply them together onto a clean bobbin uh, for your double ply yarn and then you're done. So that's just a really great arrangement to have the Lazy Kate right there. Um, so we're ready to go. Thanks so much for joining me.